everyone. Thanks for joining me. My name is Paul Anzalotti. I am the founder of Amerasia Consulting Group, an MBA admissions consulting firm, of course. Today, we are going to be covering session three of three of uh, how to apply to Wharton's uh, elite MBA program. And in particular today, what we're gonna go over is prepping for Wharton's TBD, otherwise known as the team-based discussion, which is the invite-only collaborative, innovative, um, nail-biting interview process. Um, in particular, what I wanted to run through today is past TBD prompts, um, dive into a preterm TBD example, show you how to think about that, um, as well as some techniques for facilitating your TBD or the TBD that you'll be in with five other um, asper MBA aspirants on game day or interview day and provide a couple of interview, uh, provide a couple of TBD one minute pitch examples, which is ultimately what you're gonna have to deliver as an individual in that group, but also um, what the group's gonna have to come up with. And then finally, um, end things with actual one-on-one -on -one interview questions and answers. There's a period after the TBD, the group-based interview where it's just one-on-one. -on -one. All right, moving on. So before, it, there's been two other sessions. Obviously, this is session three of three. There's been two others. I put the dates on here. You can access them on GMAT Club's channel on YouTube. Uh, first one basically covered how to research Wharton MBA program, understanding its offerings as well as its culture. You'll see how a lot of that plays into not only session two, but this session as well. Last week's session, session two, was basically a breakdown of Wharton's two essay prompts, which are described here. How do I know what I'm talking about? Well, I've been doing this for about 15 years, MBA admissions consulting. I've worked with a lot of people. I've seen every different type of background um, and scenario, uh, strength, weakness, things of that nature. So my advice, it's not one size fits all. It's just what I've seen in this presentation is just based upon what I've seen work and what I've personally worked on. All right, so welcome to a wall of text, everyone. So what is the Wharton team-based discussion? Okay, here you go, start reading. Without going word for word here, it's a group discussion. There's six individuals in a group that Wharton has hand-selected to interview. You get about 35 minutes, about 45 minutes overall, maybe a little longer because you have to get into the room and get settled. But basically, you go in there, and this is the way they pitch it, a lively, thoughtful discussion. And this is the exact text that they have sent out every year when you're invited to interview. But basically, um, what all they're saying is it's a group discussion. You're going to be asked to deliver a one-minute pitch. Um, you know, they, they, they say here, you should plan to spend no more than one hour in preparation for this part of the process, the team-based discussion. That never happens. I mean, that's that's great advice, I suppose, but that never happens. And then there's a one-on-one -on -one interview portion here um, that will be about 10 minutes. And they will ask you probably two questions. As of late, they've been asking, and who is they? When you walk into the room for the team-based discussion, there'll be a at least one, of course, maybe two second year students from Wharton is what you know I've seen over the last few years. And they won't really say anything. You'll get in there and they'll basically just say, begin, right? And um, the chairs will be in a circle, however they will be in. The Wharton representatives, second year students will basically just be there to observe, take notes, you know, the strong silent type basically. And don't let that mess with your head anyway. Um, so anyway, so it's 35 minutes up front, 10 minutes, uh, you know, and you're supposed to conclude the 35 minute portion with a collective one minute pitch. So everybody comes into the 35 minute portion, the group portion, the TBD portion with their own one, one minute pitch and make sure it's one minute, by the way, you know, no, don't be rude. But remember, this is all about how you interact in a group, right? So come in there one minute, you give the pitch. Um, you know, after, you know, you make some rudimentary introduction to the group, everybody goes around in a circle, gives their pitch, then you'll, and that'll take what, six minutes, supposedly, eight minutes, the other 29, 30, 29, 30 minutes, basically you will be there um, discussing and hashing it out. And at the end of the presentation, the group is supposed to come up with one solid 
um, pitch, right? It can be one person's idea. It can be a combination of everybody's idea. Usually it's a combination of everybody's idea. One person can present it that the group picks. Uh, all six people can present it, which is usually the norm. Uh, the final pitch is not a one minute pitch, by the way. So it can take longer, um, I believe. Anyway, that's all up for the group to decide. Uh, Wharton doesn't really constrain you other than the 35 minutes here and other than basically having everyone give the one minute pitch and then a final group pitch at the end. And then you go into a one-on-one -on -one interview session. It's about 10 minutes and it's pretty much exactly 10 minutes, if not less. Um, I even heard of Wharton interviewers putting um, you know, a timer on the table for 10 minutes. And they used to ask about five questions in those 10 minutes, uh, but now they pretty much as of the last year or two, but only been asking two. And we'll go over that at the end. And I put in the love warden at the end here, so haha. All right, moving along, next slide. So let's get into a little bit of the history of the TBD, the team-based discussion. So, and I'm providing three prompts here from different years in the past, of course, uh, where you'll see that they're kind of asking the same thing more or less, but regardless of the specifics of what they're asking you to come up with, they're always asking you to propose something. They're really, you know, whatever they may ask, this is all about observing you and not necessarily how great your idea is, even though you have to, you know, you can't sound like a person who's completely unprepared or knows nothing about Wharton, but really what they're looking for is how well will little Johnny or little Susie applicant fit in at Wharton. And so they like you already. They know about your goals. Check that box. They know about perhaps from SA2 how you're going to contribute. But what they want to know is they they got to see the um got to see the real deal, you know, flesh and blood. And they got to see or they must see here that the way you interact with others, you know, you play nice and you're well adjusted. And you're not uh, a guy or a gal who has to uh, continue talking over everybody and you know, their their way or the highway. Anyway, without getting too far off what this slide covers, prompt one. So this prompt, just a little history lesson, they asked you to come up with uh, a new global modular course, GMC, right? And, you know, the, the you know, it, it, they're almost always asking you to propose something new, of course, right? It's a, it's a pitch, it's a proposal. And it doesn't matter if the GMC is in Liberia or Lebanon, what matters is that when you propose it, it's one minute, your ideas are structured efficiently, and you demonstrate an understanding of the way things work at Wharton. Both, for example, you don't propose a GMC or some new initiative, whatever it may be, that is already in existence, but also you don't um, basically, uh, you, you demonstrate a knowledge of knowledge for action and the collaborative innovation and some of these more cultural aspects that Wharton's looking for. So again, in this prompt from way back in the day, they're asking you to propose a new GMC, right? And and if you haven't, you know, as a reality check, if you don't know the list of current GMCs or past GMCs, you haven't basically done that research, you're going to go in there like uh, a lamb being led to the slaughter, basically. You're going to look foolish, right? You might even be called out by um, a fellow participant, even though it's highly unlikely because nobody wants to look bad, but it'll be on everybody's mind, including the Wharton rep or reps that are, that are in there. All right, let's look at another prompt quickly. Propose a new leadership venture. Again, something new at the school. Um, this would require you to know about the current and past slate of leadership ventures and really what the learning objectives or the leadership development objectives are of uh, the leadership venture, even when it occurs. Um, and just a general knowledge of um, the McNulty leadership program. And so, Anyway, so that's, again, something innovative, something new. I've often wondered if Wharton ever uses the ideas that they hear. The answer is probably not, right? Because why? Overall, the objective is to see how you play nice with others in a group setting in the sandbox. Let's see another one. Prompt three. This is the last example here. Um, last part of the history lesson. So this one, what are they asking you for? They're saying... Um, for the purpose of this discussion, you're a core member of the Student Run Club's conference committee. And basically, you're supposed to develop, propose, deliver a one-day high-impact conference on the topic of your choice, you know, keeping in mind these aims. And you'll see across all three of these prompts that Wharton does place constraints on you by virtue of what they're writing, you know, a one-day conference. Okay, a high-impact, right? They'll let you 
choose the topic of your choice, you know, trying to see what you believe is most relevant to an MBA student like you without proposing something, a conference that may already exist. So again, if you do that, you didn't do your homework. Um, anyway, and now that being said, you don't have to come up with the most innovative thing on earth. Because why? Because this is just meant for you to articulate an idea that is somewhat novel, do so in a very clear way to the rest of the group, and then spend the next 30 minutes playing nice and hashing it out and facilitating with everybody else. And that is what the most important thing. And I'll cover a little bit of that later. All right. So again, you know, to summarize, what's the same across all these things? I mean, they're pretty much asking you for something similar. Propose a new retreat, a new conference, a new club, new learning initiative, a new course. Um, and every time you must understand what already exists there. Uh, you must understand, you know, uh, you know, who some of the players are that you may have to propose these things to. Um, and you must be realistic, right? Every time they know they'll ask you for a three day retreat, you'll see in a few slides, one day conference, you know, global module courses, for example, and you should know this if you're applying to Wharton are usually about two or three days. Um, leadership ventures, I think are about a week long, depending on where you go. Some are three days. Those are intensive. Some are, you know, a whole week if you go to Antarctica because you can't go to Antarctica for three days. Apparently. Who knew? Anyway, but these are the two things you need to know. All right. So, you know, then really, you know, let's, let's dive into, let's deep dive, ladies and gentlemen, let's deep dive into a specific example. And this one's from a few years back. Uh, it shares the common um, characteristics that we just discussed on the prior slides, but um, long, the long and the short of it is that they want you to propose a three-day weekend, um, or they want you to basically propose a three-day retreat, right? So there's a three-week long preterm before you even, when you get to Wharton, before you even go into your traditional classroom, there is a preterm course. It actually is a four-credit course. Um, and what they're saying is, okay, you're going to be in this preterm. Now what we would like you to do given that you're in the preterm, so you see they're placing a constraint around it, is that we want you to propose a three-day retreat to conclude. And remember, they're not just putting these words in. They probably have spent a lot of, Wharton has probably spent a lot of time writing this question prompt. So they wanted to conclude the three-week long preterm. Immediately what that says to me um, and should say to you is that not only does, yes, this come at the end of the preterm, but it's supposed to represent a capstone, right? Something that is meant to really drive home what preterm is about or what you were supposed to have learned at preterm or something, drive home the takeaways. And of course, that will require you to know what preterm is, its structure, but what are the learning objectives of preterm? And, and we'll get into that here. But anyway, so the bottom line is they give you a bunch of Warden will always give you a bunch of, of explanatory text and, you know, and pay attention to the subtle cues, right, and clues. Uh, but, okay, so preterm, you're going to want to do all the research separately because it's not contained in this question prompt and lo know everything about it, when it occurs, how long, how many people. They give you a little of that here with, it, with uh, you know, your 860 students is divided equally into four diverse clusters of 215 students. Okay, so. Um, so for the purposes of this discussion, you have been invited to join a team tasked with developing a three-day retreat, including travel. Hmm. See, that's not just a random factor, but including travel at the end of preterm for your cohort of 70 students. So, wow, that's a lot of people you're planning for, three days, including travel. As a team, determine learning objectives as a team in the TBD. Programming and metrics for success for this preterm retreat provide opportunities for team building, social engagement, and personal enrichment while being mindful of logistics and location. Okay, so uh, 70 students might be relevant. Three day retreat is certainly relevant, including travel. That's weird, but definitely kind of a, a little bit of a, uh, you know, should raise your ears a little bit, including travel. Okay, what that tells me, by the way, is that it should be located somewhat close. So it's not like you can fly it up. Kazakhstan for a three-day weekend, you know, unless you came up with a Concord. So um, 70 students at the end of the preterm, got it. And then they want us to determine the learning objectives, programming, and metrics for success. So they're pretty much telling you and the other six people in the TBD that when you present, you better hit on these areas, right? 
uh, you know, I mean, they're almost giving you a little agenda for it or a little template, <clears throat> a framework. Provide opportunities for team building, social engagement, personal enrichment. Okay, so you see how there's three days, team building, social engagement, personal enrichment. I'm not gonna draw too many correlations here, but um, what I like is when people break it down day by day. And there's an example later in this presentation, uh, but perhaps maybe they're telling you three days and maybe they're giving you three overarching or you know opportunities for these three areas team building social engagement personal enrichment because maybe you can do one per day i don't know maybe you do a little bit of each per day let's see right well being mindful of logistics and location okay travel time and a place that can fit 70 individuals all right so this is how i would begin analyzing the tbd prompt i mean i already kind of have all right, so again, I love I love uh, undermining my next slide, right? So in years past, the TBD prompt tended to focus on international or global initiatives, right? We've seen that. Um, global modular courses, leadership treks to remote locations. This prompt definitely, in my opinion, like I said, focuses on something closer to home. Three days, including travel time. Um, why? You can't really go too far and get too much done with 70 people in three days if you're traveling halfway around the world. All right, so you know all this. Uh, so I would definitely keep the location closer to Philadelphia or the USA, right? Somewhere at least in you know this part of the world. Okay, so another wall of text, give me, but um, perhaps maybe I can read it to you like a bedtime story. But again, as you go through and you begin analyzing the prompt, um, you know, just to be clear here, I don't believe that proposing something offshore is wrong. Right, because we know Wharton does have a global footprint, global emphasis. That's kind of one of its tenets or the foundation of Wharton, right? Beyond innovation and like let's say um, yeah, social entrepreneurship. Um, but remember, you this you have to get this done in a minute. This pitch, and the more you start adding, oh, we're going to go here or there, offshore, this hemisphere, this longitude, this latitude perhaps you're unnecessarily complicating it, right? And perhaps it should be maybe closer to home in the Western hemisphere, but just know that you have in a one minute pitch, you're gonna have about 115 words, right? Two words per minute, depending on your command of the English language. So when you're writing this thing out, I would bullet point it, but I would also make sure that um, you're not really going over, let's say 120 words. Remember, this isn't an exercise in jamming 10 pounds of shit into a five pound bag, you know, excuse my French, but, you it looks bad this is an effort you know think of this like the resume the more stuff you cram onto a resume on one eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper you don't get more points for that you just look like you know you're writing a manifesto right so here err on the side of speaking slower more clearly having fewer points having points that are slightly higher level so you can get it all in in one minute and a lot of folks right now, if you're thinking, how am I supposed to do all this in one minute? Well, you're thinking about it the wrong way because you're approaching it from the perspective of, I have these 10 things I wanna fit in here and I have to fit them in there. The only way to fit them in there in a minute is to talk faster. Nope, the way you gotta think, of course, and I know this sounds very simplistic, but you know, try changing how you think, right? Um, you gotta cut it down uh, and, and bring it up a level. Okay, so what else? Um, why do they specifically call out some of these things? Me metrics for success, all right, always pay attention. Um, again, and I know I undermined this slide by talking about this earlier. For that matter, what is the relevance of having this retreat during preterm, okay, but at the end of preterm? And again, it's to drive a lot of the lessons home at the that you may have learned, a leadership lessons, um, storming, forming, norming, leadership lessons, getting to know your homies that you'll be hanging out with for the next two years. And regardless, you need to learn, know the learning objectives of preterm and you need to have this somehow drive it home in some way. It's a capstone, it's a challenge, it's something that represents or tests the knowledge that people or have gained, the knowledge that people may have gained or should have gained from preterm. All right, again, these details are not red herrings. Pay attention, don't overanalyze stuff. I mean, I know I just said, listen, you gotta pay attention to these subtle cues and then I'm telling you not to overanalyze. It, listen, it's a it's, uh, thin line between you know fries and shakes type thing. So um, just know if you're writing a ton, you're not getting it. Okay, moving on. All right, so listen, before we go any further, well, what the heck is preterm? 
Now, I put some of this stuff in this nice, fancy Century Schoolbook font because this is pretty much um, ripped straight from some Wharton, you know, material Wharton has provided. So forgive me. This is fair use, by the way, because uh, I'm critiquing and analyzing. So um, what is it, right? Okay, preterm. Preterm, I mean, you can already guess, right? But I guess I'll read it anyway. Prepares you academically for the MBA curriculum and ensures that your diverse incoming class begins to begins to fall term with a consistent level of knowledge. It puts everybody on the same page, in other words. However, but wait, there's more. Preterm offers more than just academic preparation, really. Um, students also enjoy many enriching and rewarding co-curricular activities. Awesome. This includes, these activities include career management. Wow, that wasn't what, I, that's not what I was thinking when you just said enriching and rewarding uh, or exciting. Career management and leadership program orientations. Okay. Faculty lectures, okay, getting better. And various workshops that prepare you for the technical rigors of the Wharton MBA program. Technical rigors. Wow, sounds like computer camp. Preterm includes many social activities, yay, that will include, that will introduce you to your classmates and to Philadelphia. Interesting. Okay, so you know preterm's in Philadelphia. Obviously, why? Because Wharton's in Philadelphia. Um, but whatever. So, you know, three days, you know, they're not going to send you to start this thing off in Kazakhstan, right? And then all of a sudden you head to you head to Philly. All right. Preterm includes many social activities that will introduce you to your classmates. Yay. And to Philadelphia. Yay. You will see some of these activities on the preterm grid, whatever that is. And you will sign up for others through preterm auction when you sign up for other activities through preterm. Okay, whatever. There's preterm. You kind of know what it is, right? Um, also, there's a, a you know a cluster assignment that you will receive. So what, there are four clusters, right? Remember that math? So you'll receive, um, uh, you know, it'll be for the next academic year, apparently. So, all right, so then Wharton's a large program. There, we don't want you to get lost. Okay, we're gonna assign you to a cluster, subdivide it, okay, 70 people, right? Um, and again, this is not included in the preterm prompt. This is stuff you can find on Wharton's website when you simply Google their site for preterm, right? They'll break it down and, and 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 give you the mechanics of it and this is if you're not doing this basic research and you're just coming up with an idea oh boy um so anyway you know what preterm is now now um the interesting thing that i bolded here that you can barely tell was bolded i should have put it in oranges as a member of this cluster you will attend a learning team retreat and a diversity workshop these events are mandatory uh-oh so they already have a learning team retreat but now they're asking to come up with another one at, at the end of it. I'm guessing the one they already have um, doesn't really fit what they're looking for, but I'm guessing it also doesn't come at the end of preterm. And, and it doesn't, by the way. But so what I'd go in is I would look around and try to find out more information on <clears throat> the mechanics or the structure of the learning team, the existing learning team retreat. And that way you can make sure, and this is important, for example, you can make sure that what you propose isn't exactly like what already exists because the Wharton proctors and the TBD will know that you just proposed something already exists. And then, of course, your five other colleagues in the TBD, one might call you out on it and say, yeah, great idea, but somebody already came up with that. All right, anyway, um, so just make sure whatever you propose is different. What's the bottom line here? Because we don't know if there's going to be a preterm uh, propose a preterm retreat this year. Chances are there's not. The main point is to go through and know what already exists so you don't end up looking like a fool. Next slide. Okay, anyway, so more on. So let's, okay, so let's, let's make sure that, you know, let's inventory some of the differences so that we aren't getting this confused, if any of you are confused, right? So they want a learning team. So there's a learning team retreat that already exists, right? And, you know, it's, it's, the one thing I would take away from the existing retreat that they have, um, not the one that you're going to propose, is that it's centered on, you know, leadership development. Overall, preterm is meant to get you to gel get with your, your cluster, with your learning team. It's meant to get you back into the groove of classroom learning, you know, shift you out of professional mode. There's also some leadership development in the existing preterm. So it's a theme, leadership development, um, that you can probably integrate into um, your 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 proposal, right? Um, without repeating the same types of things. So maybe the initial preterm retreat or whatever's there focuses on one aspect of leadership. You don't want to duplicate that. You don't want to repeat. But at the same time, you know 
there should be some kind of takeaway or emphasis on leadership, whatever. I think I'm beating this thing to death. Um, all right. So uh, the other thing, too, is that you want to do an environmental scan of what else is involved in leadership development at Wharton. And I think this will definitely hold true for this year's uh, TBD prompt. But you want to make sure you're looking at things like the McNulty Leadership Center, you know, um, because or leadership program, rather, because if you're not if you're not aware of that and you propose some three day retreat at the end of preterm, that that is like something that already exists at McNulty or the exact same at McNulty, it won't look that great, right? So you should go out there and see what three-day retreats McNulty currently has. It probably give you some ideas to how to structure it um, and, and what they're emphasizing in terms of leadership development over those three days. But you also need to know that you can't have one that's exactly like that, right? So if you totally whiff or miss or uh, have no idea what McNulty is, okay, you know, it's early in the process, but by the time you get to this, if you have no idea what McNulty is, it's, you know, it's, are you sure that invite for the TBD was meant for you? Anyway, um, okay, what else? Um, oh, they ask you, the TBD prompt, Wharton is asking you to determine metrics for success, right? Uh, now, a lot of individuals that I have worked with will take this very literally and very granularly, right? And they'll start saying, well, we want a 5% increase in leadership, 10% increase in collaboration, and blah, blah, blah. That's not what they're asking for. Remember, this is one minute. They want it very general. You only have 35 minutes or 30 minutes to discuss what some of these metrics are, are success, you know, metrics for success are, right? So it's basically metrics for success is what are you going to get out of this? You have to present at the end of your TBD your own, but as well as the group one. Um, what are the learning ob objectives and what are how will you measure them, right? And on the next slide here are some general metrics for success, right? You know, use at your own risk. But this is what I've seen work more or less. I mean, something like this. So you don't see any percentages here or numbers or, you know, hard bars that you must uh, clear to be successful. But, you know, it's, it's things that are a little more touchy-feely when it comes to leadership, which perhaps may be touchy-feely things that are more related to developing or honing one's soft skills as a leader and not, you know, 2.578% increase in, in ability to, to tell jokes or whatever it would be, ability to take tough criticism, um, greater self-awareness and introspection, greater ability to lead a diverse people and interests, right? Greater ability to impact business, not only the bottom line, but maybe in a personally relevant way. Okay. Things like that, right? you folks can read hopefully um all right and again and this this side is important don't let all the text fool you right uh it's not about having the best idea it's never about having the best idea um, i have clients and friends whoever else that's applying to wharton that will obsess over it has to be the most unique perfect uh hard-hitting wow idea ever that is while that may be possible, you might not have enough time to do it. And it should, but more than that, it shouldn't be your goal because you're not going to communicate that idea and have people understand it in a minute when you give your pitch. Um, if people don't understand it, even in the subsequent 30 minutes you have to work with a group, you may, they may not get it. Um, and therefore, if they don't get it, your contributions may not be baked into the final presentation, right? And again, going back to something I said earlier in this presentation, it's not about the best idea, but about a clear idea that everybody can understand that that is unique in that it doesn't copy something that's already at Wharton and something understandable. And it builds off of Wharton's DNA, the knowledge for action, uh, you know, translates knowledge for action uh, or, you know, it demonstrates, you know, innovative collaboration, all these things. Right. Um, and and so don't fixate on the small details, um, which you cannot have. In a, in a in a comprehensive one minute pitch, 120 words, 115 words, right? Um, I see a lot of people think that they can come up with the best idea again by jamming 10 pounds of shit into a five pound bag in the one minute mission. And again, that's completely not the point. Um, see if you you know if you feel you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. So um, anyway, so it's it's much less about you know 
giving a lot of background. A lot of people I've seen make mistakes by giving a lot of background in their one minute pitch of who they are, or, you know, you, you don't even need to say your name, just get right into what the pitch is, right? If you've already made introductions, don't say your say, name, just say my pitch or my proposal is to, and then get right into it. So it's not about restating what preterm is. If you know a lot of details about preterm or whatever it is um, this covers during your TBD, you bring that up during the 30 minutes, you know, and to facilitate the conversation, not to be the smarty art or to prove that you're, you know, more sophisticated than everyone else. The point is to share and facilitate the conversation. And of course, get in the fact that you know a lot about Wharton. Um, okay, so overall the objective, not to not have the most whiz bang innovative idea, um, which inevitably won't happen and shouldn't happen, but it's about how well you get along with others and play nice, as I said earlier in this presentation. Um, and how well specifically you facilitate the consensus building process during the actual TBD. You want the student or students or representatives from Wharton who are sitting there saying nothing kind of at the back of the room or somewhere off to the side, you want them to think, ah, this gal or guy, I could work with him or her, right? I could work with he, she, um, you know, definitely. Um, I could have a beer with them as well. So uh, those who, people who tend to think that it's about the best idea, are the same types of individuals in the TBD who screw themselves. They give themselves enough rope to hang themselves with because they insist that their proposal is right or they they you know they chop the legs out of another person who's in the TBD who may clearly have a bad idea but you don't need to say it, right? The idea is that you facilitate um uh, you know, you get them to think, you share ideas, maybe uh, by ways of uh, questioning them, they'll kind of realize it and back off or whatever. But if you have to dominate the conversation, you're probably the same person who thinks it's about, all about coming up with the best idea. And you're probably the person who doesn't play well with others. That'll probably be very evident to the Wharton reps in the room, and you're probably not going to get in. That being said, if you play nice, you may not get in, but I've seen TBD groups. I know for a fact where five out of six, six out of six of the participants got in. So think about that, folks, um, when you have this whole um, natural inclination to think it's dog eat dog or, you know, um, you know, only one can survive. No, all of you can be successful if you're just cool and you don't, um, you're not a jerk, right? Okay. Uh, so what else is there? Um, now, again, bottom point that's barely visible here. Shame on me. Listen, there, there will be better. Um, there will be better preterm ideas or TBD ideas than others, right? And again, don't choke slam anybody like this is, you know, worldwide wrestling, right? You, and we'll get into facilitation techniques later, but you want to ask some questions about their idea, right? Not to get them to look stupid, but to get them to be a part of a conversation that is constructive, right? All right. Anyway, um, I guess this is, uh, I guess I have a cut and paste error. But anyway, so the bottom line here is, without rereading what was on the other slide, if you understand Wharton's knowledge fraction mantra and this whole idea of collaborative innovation and go back to the first, you know, that means doing your own research, by the way, because that's a whole presentation in and of itself. And ta-da, we have that presentation from two weeks ago. My first presentation in the series, one of three. Uh, we'll go back and tell you a lot more about that and how to figure it out and what Wharton's all about. Anyway, um, yeah, okay. So you want to be the facilitator role. You want to ask a lot of questions. You don't want to be Mr. or Mrs. Sledgehammer, right? Or Sledgehammer X, right? Okay. So more about facilitating the best idea because individuals, my clients, friends, they'll always ask me, what is it? How do you facilitate? Okay. I mean, that's that's a good question, right? So it means, and look at, look at these, these, these bullet points, right? So a good facilitator, what do they do? They promote others' ideas, right? Like a, you're like a traffic cop. Um, you direct the flow of traffic. Uh, maybe cops not the right, like traffic director, an orchestra conductor. That's a better, that's a better um, analogy here. So, you know, what does that look like in reality? You know, you want to promote others' ideas, but are the ones that make sense or are consistent with your own ideas, right? So if somebody has a, excuse my French again, batshit insane idea. You don't necessarily want to be like, that is a good idea, Frank or Henry or whatever, Susie, um, no, right? I mean, you can, but <laughs> don't, right? Just kind of say, you know, X person's idea, Susie's idea sounds promising since it incorporates purpose, scope, and measures of success for a new young alumni engagement program, yada, yada. What does everyone else think, right? So 
you're not saying I like your idea because it sounds like mine. You're saying I like your idea because you know what? Even though I like being on planet Earth and you want to have this TBD or whatever on, on planet Mars, and it may look like we're worlds apart, my, you know, yours includes all the basic ingredients. So I can get on board with that. I can get on board with any idea that basically has, that meets the metrics laid out by the question prompt, right? So don't get married. I always say, do not get married to your idea. Um, you know, be much more flexible and know as part of the facilitation process, any person's idea that fits the basic criteria of demonstrating knowledge for action, you know, it's collaborative, it's innovative, it doesn't duplicate anything that's already at Wharton. So what if it's on Mars, right? It does the same thing, all right? Well, maybe you can't get to Mars in three days, but hopefully Elon is solving that. Good facilitator, bullet point two, connects the dots for the rest of the team, no matter whose dot it may be, but only the dots that align with the facilitator believes is ideologically consistent with their own idea. Okay, whatever. It looks like person X and person Y's idea, and you're not person X, you're not person Y, you're person Z, but it looks like Susie over there and Bobby over there, their ideas are very similar or somewhat similar or consistent or congruent or whatever the word is, compatible in you know scope, topic, purpose, duration. Do you think we could combine those two into a hybrid, you know, known as Z, right? What else? A good facilitator promotes other people's good ideas as the facilitator demonstrates his or her in-depth knowledge of the Wharton learning environment, right? I like little, you know, little uh, Terry's idea. Well, not little, I like Terry's idea because um, he, you know, it, it seems to align with a lot of the other outreach initiatives, student, alumni, whatever. I mean, this has nothing to do with preterm right now, but just as an example, it's, it's consistent with what I've seen at Wharton with their other outreach programs, such as X, Y, and Z. What does everyone else think? So you'll see here, by the way, uh, that I like when people ask questions, right? So even if, somebody has a little bit of a wacky idea, ask questions about it, right? Um, even if somebody's idea is whatever it may be, you ask questions to facilitate the conversation. Don't make absolute de you know, determinations like, oh God, that idea is great, or oh God, that idea is terrible. Just ask them like, hey, I really like your idea. Okay, so people lower their defenses, but I have a question about it, or and I have a question about it. Um, I don't know if I included this in this presentation, but sometimes people will drone on and on, not you, Somebody else will make the mistake of talking and talking, kind of like I do, and they won't let anybody say a word. And um, and the best way to interrupt that person, from my own personal experience, right? You know, individual results may vary. Is you say, I really like as they're talking, you say, "Hang on, Bill or whoever." You know, I really like your idea. I have a question about it, right? And so again, that person gets the opportunity to talk, but you are interjecting and whatever question you ask, you may, you know, I really like your idea. I have a question about it. How do you think it aligns with Susie's idea or Betty's idea or, you know, Barb's idea? I don't know. Maybe it's the 1950s, right? With all these names. But um, so you remember you being you're the orchestra conductor, the uh, traffic cop director. Uh, that is the role you can play. And it's not even, again, it's not about your idea. So it's definitely not about promoting your own idea during the 30 minutes, even though some of that will happen. It's about um, getting everybody to share, right? And, and there's something else that's interesting here. Wharton's, one of Wharton's letter of recommendation questions uh, that your boss should fill out is, the first question is, why do, you, um, why do you think this person will be an asset to the Wharton classroom? Something like that. And basically it's because, you know, why, how will they be a contributor? How well do you think they'll do in the classroom? And the, the answer is, is because more or less, um, and again, individual results may vary in how well your boss can articulate this and how well you actually are a facilitator, right? A communicator, you make the learning environment better for everybody else. That's essentially what the Wharton representatives are looking for. Are you making the conversation in the 30 minutes you have, whatever you may be discussing, are you making it better? Are you calling upon people who maybe aren't talking as much or getting talked over, right? Are you very sophisticated in how you facilitate, especially if somebody's being very aggressive, not you, somebody else. Um, and again, you know, the, think about this application holistically. First question is why do you think the person will, you know, applicant will find success in the Wharton classroom? It's because he, she, it is somebody who always looks to promote the contributions of others, always looks to bring out the best in others. The, the conversations they facilitate, you know, um, 
are not so that people will agree with them, but basically um, to to genuinely hear what other people have to say and integrate it into your own idea, yada, yada. Okay, moving on. Uh, okay, so again, don't be married to your own idea. It's like I'm from the future, I'm, you know, when I, when I undermine my, my, my upcoming slides. So just remember, you can support anyone's idea. I would think in these four points, right, for any TBD that may come up. I can, like the, the whole Earth versus Mars example, the, the great example that I gave a few seconds ago or a few minutes ago. So whether it's on Earth, whether it's on, you know, Mars or Pluto, I can support any idea during the TBD, mine or anybody else's, that demonstrates or aligns with Wharton's culture for innovation. It's introducing something new, innovative. It, it trans, it's translating something we've learned, knowledge, into something very pragmatic, action, right? Um, and, 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 and listen, I'll give you an example. That may be able to seem a little obtuse, right? But to clarify, I've seen people you know, ask me, well, I've heard people ask me, you know, can we just have like a bake sale? Can we just have like a sports day? Can't, you know, and I'm like, no, you can't because what the hell does that have to do with an MBA and all this stuff? Well, you can demonstrate leadership lessons through sports. That's true. That's right. That, that is true. Right. But, you know, you, <laughs> this is not a fun decompress. Let's get away for the weekend event where, you know, we, we, we play cricket or badminton or whatever. Right. This is something that's meant to drive home or, or a capstone to the overall process, right? And is sports, if you, you know, gonna have a good tournament or something, I mean, is it really showing leadership in, in, in the way that a business school traditionally teaches leadership, right? No, but that's what makes it innovative. Yeah, but that's what also makes it irrelevant, right? So here, perhaps you can define a sports tournament at the end of preterm as innovative. I'm thinking out of the box, but it does become ridiculous. And if you know Wharton's culture of innovation, it's literally, it literally means knowledge, you know, you know, for action, right? Um, more or less, right? It, it, it literally means translating something you've learned into something, it's, it's tangible application in the real world. And that doesn't include really playing sports, right? So if you're learning something, it should have an impact. Maybe you can be stress tested during those three days, let's see, to see if you've really learned those leadership lessons. And there are probably better ways to, to, to stress test leadership lessons that you learn during preterm in your learning team, in a team environment, small team environment, over three days than playing sports or checkers or chess or whatever, right? And again, we'll go over some examples towards the end of this presentation. All right, what else? Point two, sufficiently reaches its intended audience, whoever it may be, right? For what weren't alumni, students with engaging programming, whether that you know, is in person or otherwise, right? So your, whatever you propose, whatever the TBD prompt is, preterm or, you know, a GMC, a, you know, global modular course they want you to come up with, a conference, it, you know, it should sufficiently reach its intended audience. And I know, listen, COVID, apparently there's a pandemic going across the world and maybe everything has to be online. Sure, I mean, I think a lot of people may have a tendency to bake that into their TBD, but I wouldn't worry about that so much, right? you should make sure that whatever it is you're doing, whether it's online or off, has the type of programming content that is relevant for the audience that it that it's meant to impact. So if you're trying to reach out and develop some alumni outreach program, what's relevant to Wharton alumni? Orient your programming that way. If it's a preterm retreat at the end of the preterm, it's a capstone, okay, is playing cricket necessarily or some sport necessarily relevant? Is it the best way to engage the, its participants in a way that will really drive home lessons earned? You know, maybe, maybe not, but probably maybe not. Um, anyway, so um, yeah, and if possible, by the way, and it depends on what the TBD prompt is, you can pull in, you know, alumni, of course, students will have to be involved and possibly faculty, right? So if you need to rely on the Greater Wharton Network, I suppose, to come in and present case studies or facilitate or lead something or whatever, um, then tap that network. It's okay to say stuff like that. And again, um, there's an example later that we'll get into that may cover that, right? Um, also point three, whatever it is, you can support anybody's proposal, including your own, but anybody's or a combination of others that is consistent in the format and lessons it seeks to instill, right? With other, 
you know, alumni relation initiatives, professional development initiatives, leadership development initiatives, right? So if you see, again, you don't want to copy what's already existing. Um, but if you see that Wharton always has these treks and they go somewhere for three days and they partner with, you know, the LA County Fire Department to, you know, ride along on a fire truck and, you know, bring you out to a fire and have you work on a team before the building burns down. And that's how you test your leadership lessons and yada, 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 and whatever. Um, and you see, there's a lot of that type of thing. Well, maybe your idea isn't with the LA Fire Department. Maybe it's with the U.S. Marines. Maybe it's at some type of tactical training center that stress tests these ideas and forces you to plan as a team, come up with that plan and execute over three days, you know, and whatever, while having a good time. Um, so look to see what's already there. Don't copy, but make sure it's consistent with, because Wharton is set up. So if you say, well, we're going to have to get into a time machine and then we're going to go to Mars and then we're going to, you know, it's like, okay, well, that's a great idea. Um, you know, besides the technology not being invented, you know, even if we could do it in three days, right? Uh, I don't see anything else where we're getting into some fancy schmance um, machine and, and teleporting ourselves somewhere. Right. It's just not consistent at all. And how many people, how many you fit the entire learning team or cluster into that, that time machine or travel machine. All right. So um, another thing, point four, in my opinion, uh, you can support anybody else's idea or combination of ideas that uh, leverages existing resources at Wharton. Right. So if you have to collaborate with a certain department or a certain group, um, you know, on, on developing some type of teaching materials or some type of course, you know, rope that in to the conversation. So if you somebody else is saying, listen, I want to translate lessons learned from preterm into this final capstone three day weekend. And we can do that with the help of some group internal to Wharton that, you know, translates knowledge, you know, whatever the lessons learned into action or that works with faculty. It works for the center for knowledge transfer, or whatever. Name, you know, I mean, name that in your own presentation. But if you hear somebody else saying that, you're like, yeah, I really like that, right? Um, get different alumni, get different groups, get different students, faculty involved in developing this new programming, if you can, right? Without, you know, having it just be a, a you know, a, a, a mosh pit in the end. Okay. Um, so, bottom line, look for somebody's idea or any idea or a group idea that leverages existing resources at Wharton to come up with this stuff, like the McNulty leadership programs uh, director or whatever other center director to help you run this, right? And it's as quick as in your idea or your final presentation or somebody else's idea saying, yeah, you know, we could tap hopefully the leadership of the McNulty leadership program to help us develop this initiative. Because I see that our proposal is consistent with a lot of the formats that they're using over there so they probably have expertise in that. And so I do think we can get it done in three days um, by tapping their vast subject matter expertise and running a three-day yada, 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 leadership development initiative. Okay. Um, all right. So now developing your own idea, folks, right? How do we, we do that? So we've kind of dissected a few others. How do we develop or how do you develop your own, right? And this is the kind of the way that I would think about this right walking through that preterm retreat example from a few slides back where you have to come up with a three preterm retreat at the end uh come up with learning objectives metrics for success and programming over three days um for 70 people in your cohort okay so um this is how i would think i would think all right we got to accommodate 70 people in the cohort that's going to be a fairly big production especially over three you know three days and the best way to deal with a lot of people is develop programming that's straightforward and simple. Again, it's not about the idea, it's about you to how you can communicate it. Keeping it simple allows you to get into one minute, but keeping it simple, the logistics wise and your explanation of it and not adding too many bells and whistles will actually help you execute it should you ever have to execute it, which you won't, with 70 people in three days. Okay, it can only last three days, including travel time. Okay, again, we've talked about that. So travel time must be minimized. So if you, people got to get on planes and trains and automobiles to go wherever, no, you're not, you, you realistically burn a whole day going there and getting back. Nope. So it's limited. So that I would think, okay, it's limits long distance travel. You get it. Um, you need to have a clearly defined success metrics that account for team building, social engagement, and personal enrichment. Okay. Got it. 
this retreat is very much a leadership development exercise. Okay, that's what I would personally think. I strongly believe that it is safe to assume this because of the existing preterm retreat emphasizes leadership and is part of the McNulty leadership program, which is only something you would know by researching the website. Uh, put another way, um, if you're if the, the, the retreat that you're proposing now is not, if the new retreat is not developing your leadership and ability to work as a team, then what is it doing? Again, don't talk about like, we're gonna have a volleyball tournament. We're gonna have a cakewalk. We're gonna have a bake sale. No, right? It's supposed to test your ability to work as a team or as a cluster over three days. And that three days also to me implies intense, right? So there has to be something fairly in, intense or fairly uncomfortable to push you beyond your comfort zone. Uh, again, it's not meant to be a three-day vacation, three-day bake sale, three-day cakewalk. All right. Uh, what else would I think about um, next after I kind of assessed those parameters based on the prompt that Wharton gave me? So the big thing I would consider is the timing again, only 60 seconds, probably about 120 words. Um, if you don't have that great of a command of English, you know, maybe it's 100, 110 words. It's better to speak slower. If you have heavily accented English or, you know, some type of physical impairment, let's say, um, then to, again, jam 10 pounds of shit into a five pound bag, right? Nobody will understand you. Um, okay. So anyway, I've, I've beat this reminder to death, right? Okay. So um, when defining your idea for your preterm retreat or whatever it is, right, I would consider the following. So whatever... TBD idea you're coming up with, I would consider the following for inclusion, you know, um, create an immersive event, right? So it's a, you don't have to fly to Antarctica or Kazakhstan or the, the desert where nobody else is around, but, you know, create an opportunity that is immersive in, in the sense of like, you're going to take the 70 people and you're going to put them all in one location, right? Where there are minimized distractions. So maybe it's something off in the woods, um, something, you know, you don't want to just have it on campus, in my opinion, right? Get the people out of the environment. It is a retreat. A retreat doesn't mean across the street necessarily. I would get them into the woods of like Western Pennsylvania um, and have them do something there, right? Um, so people can focus uh, on what they need to do. Okay. I would also say that when you're coming up with your whatever it is, and let's say the preterm, you want to test each participant's critical decision making. And again, I know I'm making this all specific to a preterm proposal. But if they ask you to propose anything else, right, that tests your leadership or whatever, again, three days, accelerated format, you want to stress test these people to get something out of it, right? Um, you know, the, it's, it's, and again, we'll get into an example of this, but a apply a little pressure about breaking people to test the team, to test their cohesion, to test their decision making under pressure and see what the results are, right? So, you know, don't make it a walk in the park. Um, create authentic uncertainty. Okay, great. I mean, you want to make sure it's actually challenging, like they can actually fail this. It's not going to result in anybody's death, you know, um, or disability, but, you know, make it so that there are consequences that people take seriously, right? Don't just have it be some philosophical exercise in finding oneself, right? So maybe a, a little competition between groups within, amongst or between learning teams in the cohort of 70 people. Um, Okay, listen, I'm always a fan of making something like an expedition or a goal-oriented mission, right? You get these people in a room, you tell them, okay, you have to cross the river, and here are three logs and some rope, right, and a compass, go for it. Um, create opportunities. <laughs> okay, the last one is a joke, haha. <laughs> All right, um, the best way to illustrate the above is through examples. So here's an example. Uh, military boot camp preterm retreat. Right. And again, this should be about 120 words, hopefully. Maybe it might be a little longer, but you know, you don't have to say, like, my name is uh, Paul and I am an admissions consultant and to get into this. Just say, listen, my preterm retreat, it builds upon the programs and facilities of the U.S. Marine Corps for developing leadership at its officer, officer candidate school in Quantico, Virginia. Drawing upon its famed, you know, stuff that's there, this is an intense hands on learning experience that emphasizes. One, two, and three, right? Decision-making, team-based problem-solving, effective strategic thinking. Day one, and I'm always a big fan because remember, you're communicating a lot of information quickly to all these new people who don't know you from, you know, me. And I like when you, people break it down in a very large way. Day one, we're gonna do this, you know? We're invited, you know, participants 
are placed in individual and team-based leadership scenarios, similar to those encountered by officer candidates for the Marine Corps, and they solve X, Y, Z. Day two, participants are put into small fire teams where they face navigational challenges, obstacle courses, surmount physical barriers, yada, yada. On day three, participants will dissect their experiences on the battlefield through leadership, reaction, and reflection exercise, right? What determines success? Okay, not sprains, strains, um, broken bones, know how fast you can climb ropes, right? Remember, it's not about how athletic you are. Rather, it'll be a combination of instructor scores, peer evaluation. So the instructors, yeah, okay, maybe they can be Marines. Another scenario, maybe they're alumni, maybe they're faculty, right? Um, just giving this here as an example, but remember, the main point here is that there's going to be an official evaluation. Yes, it can be Marines. It can be your fellow students. Maybe that's not the best idea, but faculty um, and alumni, sure, they have enough experience to evaluate how effective your decision making was, whether it's on a marine obstacle course or battlefield or some other type of environment, right, in the woods. Rather, it will be a combination of instructor scores, peer evaluations, okay, across several leadership decision making and collaborative problem solving categories. And <clears throat> that's it. Now, you may think, well, don't I have to tell them what the problem solving categories are? We don't I have to tell them what the leadership decision making categories are? No, that's what the 30 minutes is for, right? So don't, don't, you don't have to. You should have them in your mind. If somebody were to wake you up and say, what are the five or what are the four? You should be able to reel them off. But inevitably, you're not going to have time to get into the itty bitty uh, minutia. All right. Um, okay. So, why is this a good idea as a preterm retreat? Again, centering it on a preterm retreat proposal. Again, here we go. Usual suspects minimizes travel, can easily be achieved in three days. After all, I just laid it out in three days. Sufficiently stress. Remember, Virginia, Quantico, Virginia, away from Philly, I don't know what that is, maybe a five-hour drive. You can actually get there by car. Um, so it will sufficiently stress, or bus, it will sufficiently stress test participants, check, and their decision-making. There are clear metrics to find, or there will be through the discussion. It allows for 70 classmates to participate. Maybe you break them into smaller groups, whatever, um, learning teams, right? It will have mass appeal, okay, for the most part. Um, I hope it does. Um, you know, maybe some people will want to sit it out, but um, I doubt it. It partners with an external organization that will help facilitate the retreat. So remember I said, like, don't be afraid to tap internal resources, but external resources to to Wharton, right? Maybe you have a contact in the U.S. Marines, right? Um, so don't be afraid to, to rely upon someone who is an expert at doing or running these things. All right, what are some potential negatives with this pitch? Not that many, but although I believe this particular downside is very limited, there may be some people who are physically unable to participate. Okay, you know, whatever, get a doctor's note. Um, I think there should be an alternative exercise for them. I mean, an alternative as assignment or not physical exercise. All right, an alternative on-site non-physical boot camp exercise should be developed for these individuals. Okay, um, the pitch might be too long, right? I, it did look like to me it was longer than 120 words. It needs to be pared down. So if there were any jokes or kind of sarcasm in there, or, you know, funny stuff, get rid of that, you know, just be clear. And if that means being dry, that's fine. Your personality can come out in the subsequent 30 minute TBD. Um, and again, don't go over your 60 seconds by more. I wouldn't even say five seconds by more than two, three, four, okay, five seconds, because you're going to look like a big jerk if you keep talking, right? People will be solely focused on, my God. She just went over, he just went over, or it just went over by, you know, 20, 30 percent, kind of like this presentation is. And how rude, right? How inconsiderate, whatever. They're going to think, oh, God, I don't even remember what was being said because of the way that it was said. It was so rushed. Usually when people run over, it's because their things, you know, their, their pitch is too long. So you would think that maybe the person's talking slower and that's why they went over it. No. What I almost always see when people are practicing with me is that they, again, jam too much 10 pounds of stuff into a five pound bag. And not only are they talking fast, but they freaking run over. That's a double whammy, right? No, thank you, sir. Um, anyway, you're just not going to look like a team player overall if you run over and you talk fast. All right, here's another example. Improv comedy. Now, this might actually be scarier than, than the other, than the Marine boot camp, right? Uh, because getting on stage and speaking in front of Everybody is terrifying to a lot of people, uh, but getting up there and having to be funny is even scarier and doing it improv, you know, like coming up on the fly with ideas and feeding off of somebody else's energy that may be on stage with you who might not be funny or maybe might be funnier than you. 
um, or maybe it's just cooler, right? It can be intimidating, um, knee shaking. But anyway, let's get into it. I am proposing a three-day improv retreat held at the Philly Improv Theater. Okay. So, hey, we don't even have to go anywhere. We can go down the street, right? Now, we are getting you off campus out of the Wharton environment, so we kind of checked that box anyway. Let me continue on. This preterm retreat is meant to develop several key aspects of leadership. So we're defining kind of the the, the outcome or objectives more or less. Or, okay, communication skills and each participant's ability to think on their feet, especially when placed in uncomfortable situations. Day one. Again, I love the day one, two, three. Students will come up to speed on various communication techniques and drills relating to improv under the supervision of experienced instructors. Now, I doubt these instructors would be um, professors or anyone that works at the school because their job isn't to be that funny, to be honest with you. It's probably going to be some of the comedians who work or, you know, are part of the Philly Improv Theater. Um you have a lot to learn from some of these people who are in entertainment or, you know, do these types of things or they have a, honest to God, they have a special type of genius to be that funny on their feet, right? Day two, teams of students will perform an improv skit for the group while evaluated by instructors and peers. Okay, so I guess, you know, let the people vote, let your fellow students vote. I think, I think it would be eye-opening to maybe get some of their feedback along with their vote. Um, instructors, yeah, okay, maybe it's, uh, you know, I, I think the instructors here would be the instructors who taught you the techniques to see how well you did it. And also, you know, fe also fellow students um, could judge, you know, how effective they thought from their personal perspective, right? And it's a good way for students who are judging or evaluating or voting to think critically about, oh, okay, that's Bobby, that's Susie, that's Rajiv, and kind of, you know, think critically about it who that person may be, how well they did on stage. It's very good at getting to know somebody, whatever. That can come up in the 30 minute discussion. Day three, teams of students will perform their skit for a public audience who will then vote on which performance was best. Okay, that's kind of scary. So maybe we open up the doors to the Philly Improv Theater, give out free tickets, because who would pay to see this, to be honest with you. Um, don't invite friends and family because they're gonna be too kind. You know, I don't think mom's gonna boo you. And you have people come in off the street and you know, they can be judged, they can vote, they can whatever, right? Um, you can dial in these ideas. By the way, see what I mean? Like, don't worry about having the best idea or the most exact idea or a perfect idea because you can dial all of this in during the 30 minute discussion. And remember when I said, remember when I said, don't be married to your specific idea? So if your idea starts to change and maybe it's not held at the Philly Improv, maybe it's, you know, some other opera at the Philly Opera House, right? Okay, then you're cool with it. Um, so let it evolve. Go with the flow a little bit. The end. Success metrics will be determined by the improvisational value. Each team's ability to spontaneously communicate their interpretation of each skit's main idea to the audience. And of course, who has the most laughs or votes? All right. Um, now, when deciding on... Okay, so here's the last word on specificity, right? Um, kind of a word of warning. So... Anyway, this is when I was thinking about what else could I tell you folks attending this presentation as to what I've seen people screw up or how I've seen people think about this in the wrong way. So whenever, whatever you choose as your specific preterm retreat, make it specific. So remember before when I said, don't have it be, so there's like the first trap is having it be something that's fun and gets everybody to gel and, you know, and it'll be a cakewalk or it'll be a Sunday in the park. Or it'll be a, you know, a badminton tournament, right? Okay. Besides that, which is irrelevant here, you want to make it specific, right? Don't have, I've seen people who, if it is relevant, they are way too high level. So maybe it could be relevant, but they just, you just don't know at the end, right? And they always tell me, Paul, I don't want to pigeonhole myself. What if it's so specific that nobody else likes it? What if it's so specific that it doesn't gel with other people in the room? I would say, okay, you're overthinking it. Number one, you have 30 minutes to hash out your idea, advocate for it or advocate for a similar idea or combine them into some weird hybrid baby, right? And then present it and have the group present it at the end of the 30 minutes. But if you don't, if you're not specific, pick a direction and run with it for your one minute pitch, right? The one that you give in the beginning of, of the TBD. Because if you're not specific enough without going over a minute, but if you have no specificity because you don't want to pigeonhole yourself or because somebody else, it may run counter to somebody else's proposal, you're, 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 you're sandbagging. You're, you're deliberately undermining yourself a little bit 
um, for not much so. If you're not specific, it sounds like you don't understand what's going on. It sounds like it's something that's so lukewarm or milk toast or whatever the term is um, that anybody could say that, right? And I suppose anybody could say any of these things, but the, the, the point here is that you want to demonstrate specificity because it shows that you thought about it. It shows you kind of understand the school. Of course, the challenge is to get it done in a minute, right? And that's why you may have to pair off some of the things, um, uh, you know, limit the scope of what you're talking about. So you can't have, you know, 10 things that you try to do in day one, two, and three, you know, just keep it very simple, one, two, and three. But I just have people who don't want to break it into three days, who don't want to say it's with the the Marines or it's at a comedy club. They just want to have like, propose some like general kind of amorphous looking retreat or, you know, a global modular course or whatever their conference or whatever they're asking you to do. Like it's, it's insane, right? Just think about what you're actually going to communicate. Um, nothing. Um, anyway, so so, okay, so that's the end of TBD, the 30 minutes or the 35 minutes. Now you have 10 minutes. So after the TBD, the team-based discussion, comes the one-on-one -on -one interview portion of the interview. You have 10 minutes. Um, might even be less than that. And again, I, I mentioned in the beginning, they're going to put a timer on the table and start ticking down. I mean, I, I that many, many clients have told me they put a, a watch on the table and they look at it. I mean... I don't know, you know, it's like a Gestapo tactic or something, or it's meant to mess with you or troll you or something, but whatever, it is what it is. They used to ask all these questions here on this list, right? You know, uh, did, did what happen in there? Did it go well? Did you like it? What do you like about it? Yada. But recently, what they have been doing is just asking two questions, more or less, or two and a half questions. What are your goals? Why do you want to go to Wharton, right? And then the last question, which is kind of a, an open-ended question, you know, anything you'd like to tell me or I should know, anything you'd like to ask me as the interviewer, and that's it, right? And you don't you don't have to ask that last question, by the way. If you feel like everything's been covered and, you know, you have to go to the bathroom and you want to get out of there or something, then just know when to say when. Have the maturity and confidence to say, no, I, I believe we've covered everything. Thank you very much for your time. See ya, right? And then, you know, jet on out of there. All right, that is it. Um, oh, we have, oh, we have a, only a few questions. Okay, so um, Ashish says, hello. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I guess today there aren't that many questions at all. In fact, I don't think there's one. So great. If you have any, you know where to find me. You see my contact information is up here on the, um, uh, on the slide in the presentation, right? So reach out to me, email me at consulting.com If you need a copy of the slides, if you need some information, if you want to talk about your candidacy, you know the drill. Email me, we'll set up some time and we'll go from there. Uh, that's all for today, folks. Please, as a reminder, this is the third out of a three um, session series. Go back and watch the other two on GMAT Club's channel and I will see you next time. Thank you.